total of 21.07 lakh people travelled by air domestically in July this year, which is 82.3% lower than the corresponding period last year, Civil Aviation Regulator DGCA has said. Moreover, the occupancy rate or load factor for five out of six major Indian airlines was between 50 and 60% in June. Mahindra Group Chairman Anand Mahindra has said that the country needs to focus on therapeutics, clinical protocols, recovery rates and on lowering the fatality rate instead of the infection rate of COVID-19 in India. India registered the highest single-day spike of 66,999 cases on Thursday, to which Mahindra said that since the number of tests conducted is increasing, the number of new cases is bound to increase. Amazon has made a foray into India's online pharmacy market. The service has been launched by the e-commerce major in Bengaluru to begin with. The company plans to carry out pilots in other cities as well going ahead. With this launch, Amazon India joins the league of healthcare startups such as Practo, NetMeds, OneMG, PharmEasy, MedLife among others. TikTok and its US employees are planning to take President Donald Trump's administration to court over his sweeping order to ban the popular video app, according to a lawyer. The employee's legal challenge to Trump's executive order will be separate from a pending lawsuit from the company that owns the app, though both will argue that the order is unconstitutional. Apple and Google dropped the popular game Fortnite from their app stores after the game's developer introduced a direct payment plan that bypasses their platforms. Apple and Google both take a 30% cut from in-app revenue purchases in games, which has long been a sore spot with developers. Fortnite is free, but users can pay for in-game accoutrements like weapons and skins. Its developer Epic Games said in a blog post that it was introducing Epic Direct Payments, a direct payment app for Apple's iOS and Google Play. The debt-burdened Tata Steel has built up a liquidity war chest of Rs 20,144 crore to scrape through the economic turbulence post the coronavirus pandemic. The liquidity buffer increased by 43.6% in the six months and it includes Rs 14,178 crore of cash and cash equivalents on its books in the June quarter. The company will deploy this surplus liquidity to deleverage the balance sheet as the business conditions normalize.